Here we go again. Welcome to episode 33 of the Dealers Compressed podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly, and I will be your willing and happy and positive guide, host, whatever you want to call me. I'm just having a lot of fun, and I feel like we are getting on a roll with episode 33. When we're a third of the way through this podcast, we will officially be a third of the way to episode 100, which doesn't have any necessary significant meaning, but it just feels like it should. Uh, Maybe we'll do something special at 100. Uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Today, we're going to talk about engaging the process and how important it is to set your mind to a process and then just willfully and intentionally engaging it as you move forward and as you move through challenges and as you bump up against some resistance and some trials and why the process is the important part, why the goal of whatever you're doing should be the road that you're on, not necessarily where you end up. Now, I know that might sound a little strange, but if you think about it, that really is what we're doing with even this podcast. It's what we do as professionals. It's what we do as parents and significant others, right? The goal isn't to like die. That's not the goal, but I mean, that's the logical end of a human, right? We're going to die. So whether you know, you're a parent or if you're a human, you're going to die. Newsflash. And so the goal isn't to die one day, right? The goal is to have walked a road that was meaningful and made meaningful connections and uh, have a legacy. So that is no different in the professional world. Now, granted, you can say, well, the goal is to retire and chase a little white ball someplace warm. That's not really in my DNA, just newsflash. I just, it isn't. Like the concept of retiring, it's just not in my DNA. Either way, legacy. Episode 33. You know what happened in 1933? I Gold star to anyone who understands the coolest thing that happened in 1933. Give you a second. There was one very special football team that was founded. You probably know what I'm about to say at this point. Philadelphia Eagles were founded in 1933. The bright spot, the economy was coming back around, and then everyone got happy and said Philadelphia should have a football team. But again, if anybody knows about engaging a process and being committed to that process, it is an Eagles fan or an Eagles franchise, right? A lot of ups and downs, but look at where what happens. You keep engaging the process. So I want to talk about some other things today. Um, engaging the process is one of them. Next, we bring you a guest. We got an actual dealer, large dealer group. Um, they've won a bunch of awards. They're on automotive, automotive News' top 150 dealers in the country. Uh, it's a generational business. I've mentioned them before here on the podcast. Um, really, really great organization. I'm looking forward to going in and recording a live podcast. I won't tell you where it is, but we're traveling out to, to do it over the next week to bring you that contact. Again, a story of engaging the process. If you're an auto dealership, you have to engage the process. If you're not engaging the process of everything changing and the market condition, if you're not engaging these issues, margin compression and employment issues and branding issues and digital marketing and digital retail and consumer experience and trying to hire technicians in the short, like if you're not engaging these things and taking steps in the process, what you've already lost, just, just hit the Go watch something else on YouTube because you've already lost this podcast is not going to help you if you're not even paying attention, which really you wouldn't be watching this anyway. So I know I'm preaching to the choir most times on this. And if by chance you're ready to engage the process, go back and watch the other episodes. Look at the other people that are watching. Engage with them. Let's learn together. Yeah. So we're going to talk about cars.com this week. We're going to just talk about a few things that they're doing that I find interesting. Uh, a little bit, a little taste of everything this week. As you can tell, I'm fired up, but just about engaging the process. Had a meeting with our team internally earlier this week and kind of been thinking it through what does our creative agency contribute to in this moment, to this industry? Why are we important? What is our value proposition? And these are questions that kind of always are rolling around in my head. And for any business, that should be the question, right? What do we offer and why should anybody care? 
And, you know, for us, we just talked about it very simply and it just, you know, talk about a moment of clarity. We're a brand first agency. I personally am a brand first individual. I think macro, all the little executions don't matter anything. If you don't, don't matter anything. They don't matter at all if your brand and your why and if you're just an individual, yeah, you can have a personal brand, but you know, transition that with your reputation or your meaning or your purpose. If that's not detailed and aligned, then all your other stuff is just foggy at best. So let, let me break it down in a couple categories right now. If you are a business or an organization, you need to understand why you are in business. You need to understand what your unique positioning in the market is. Why do you do business? Why should anybody care? Why should anybody trust you? We're going to talk about that in my session uh, in, in Vegas in a few weeks, but that's a question you should start with. If you're an individual, right? So like kind of getting outside the organizational standpoint. And if you're an individual, you should ask yourself, why do I care? Why do I do the things that I do? Why do I spend my time on the things that I spend them on? Why do I have the job that I have? Because you have to understand what your macro is. If you can't define that, you shouldn't be surprised that you just feel like you're wandering. You shouldn't be surprised that you feel like you don't have roots or every decision that you make just ends up wrong. You have to understand what process and you want to engage and you have to engage. You have to define that. What are you about? And I know that maybe you've heard that other places before, but I'm just another voice saying it again. What are you grounded in? What are the roots that hold you to the ground? What are the roots that hold you to that path that you know you want to walk? Because let's just be, let's just face it. The path is never easy. You know, my, my, uh, my, I was a virtual mentor. Um, he doesn't know who I am, but I read his books. Jocko Willink, um, you know, former Navy SEAL, or maybe he's always a Navy SEAL. I don't know how to say that. He's going to get on me for that. Uh, started a company, wrote a book, Extreme Ownership, just released a new book, The Dichotomy of Leadership. But he talks about, he says, get on the path. And he says it kind of like that, except his voice sounds like a professional wrestler when he does it. But he talks about this concept of the path, right? And the path is really just a representation of the way you should go. And most times that's self-directed, right? What way do you want to go? And then when you commit to it is when the resistance comes, when you commit to it is when the fortitude is needed to stay on the path. That's why understanding and defining what the path is, is so important because the why is what holds you to the disciplines that get you there. So yeah, living a little philosophical today, on episode 33, but that's okay because these universal things that I like to talk about really do converge on the path. They really converge there because it doesn't matter if you're an organization or a car dealership. Well, they're this, a car dealership is an organization, whether you're an organization or a family or an individual, the path and engaging the path is relevant. It will always be relevant. Because our goal as humans is not to die. Our goal as humans is to matter, to make a difference, to find meaning in our work, to find meaning in the steps that we take, to find meaning on the other side of all the pain and the hardship and the struggles and the setbacks that come with life. That's my encouragement today on episode 33. Engage that path. Now, we always pivot kind of at this point, and we start talking about a little more automotive focused stuff. That other stuff is automotive relevant, um, but this stuff is a little more automotive specific. And the one thing that got my interest a lot this week, and I know it's not brand new news, but it's pretty recent news. It is cars.com's recent user interface pivot and their recent branding pivot, right? I pay a lot of attention to branding and how people position it. And basically cars.com their product uh, product development manager or director, he says, hey, we have this new new interface, this new product, and we are going to market cars very similar to the way people engage Tinder. Um, 
if you don't know what Tinder is, it is a dating app, a relationship app where it makes it really easy for people to swipe left or swipe right based on, you know, what they like and what they don't like so that it helps the the selection process go a little faster and smoother. And so cars.com said, you know, 70%, the data shows that 70% of people do not know what they want when they start the process of shopping for a car. So what we're going to do is model it after a dating site. And we're going to have people take a little quiz in the beginning. And based on the answers to the quiz, you know, we build a machine learning tool that takes that quiz with, combines it with 20 years of internal data. And it's going to spit out several options that um, we think this customer will like. And so they've released, you know, a whole marketing campaign, which is kind of funny because they kind of make it like a dating app. And, but, you know, instead of, um, a person finding another person, it's like a person finding, you know, 400 horsepower or a person finding, you know, their MVP, which could be a minivan for the soccer mom. It's clever. It's good. I don't know what agency did it, but it's good. Um, hold on. I see extensive new campaign done in collaboration with RGNA Chicago. That's pretty cool. Good agency. Uh, nice piece. Bravo. Yeah. So what are they doing? I think that they're embracing the change and trying to find new ways to give the customer what it is they're actually looking for at the bottom line. They want friction free or friction, less friction. They want uh, more fun, right? They want more empathetic. They want, um, they just want a guide. They don't want a salesperson. They want a guide. So then cars.com serves up these results based on their algorithm and the expressed interests and serves them up. And then it'll serve them up the local dealer that has what they're looking for and, I just think that's a really clever way to do it. And that's just a way to embrace the change and engage the process. Maybe they're wrong. Maybe it's going to suck. Maybe people aren't going to like it. But part of embracing the change and going forth, picking a path and walking the path, part of that is making mistakes and they're pushing the bar. They're pushing it higher or they're at least pushing it forward. You know, I watched a video. I can't remember who it was on the video that was explaining the product, but he was at their headquarters and they had a picture in the back and it was a picture of like a kind of like a windy road. And I love the, the symbolism that they said, you know, he said, well, that picture is there to remind the senior management team that we always have to try to understand what's around the curve, like what's on the other side of the curve. Cause you couldn't see it. The car kind of, the road kind of bent around a hill and you couldn't see it was over there. So I thought that was pretty cool. And that's kind of what they're doing with this product. There's one other interesting point that got a little less attention, but I think that dealers should be paying a lot of attention to, and history will decide whether or not I'm right. So the whole article and the whole, everything I read was about this one product. And then there's this little piece at the end that I think you should lean into and pay attention to. Um, and it really does tie in tightly with your attention to your brand and something that puts your brand at a whole lot of risk, I mean a whole lot of risk, that says it's also going to show customers which salesperson might be the best fit for them. Just process that for a second. Cars.com is going to show a customer which salesperson might be the best fit for them. So now... We're connecting a person with a person and the person that we're connecting that customer to is an employee of yours or an employee of someone else's. So I ask you the question, where has the power just shifted in that transaction? Oh yeah, it is true. The power has now shifted to the brand of your employee. Now, if that doesn't get you a little bit nervous, you're not really getting the point and you're not really paying attention. So lean in. I'm going to say it again. The third party app, cars.com, just paired a shopper with one of your people. And they paired them with one of your people based on that person's personal ratings and that person's personal brand. So let me tell you, if I was a car salesman right now, I've seen a bunch of these on LinkedIn, but and I'm hoping to get some on the podcast because I think it'll be super fun. 
if I'm a salesperson right now, all right, Paul J. Daly is now a salesperson in the automotive industry. What is he going to do? I'm going to do exactly what I've been doing. I'm going to build my personal brand so that people want to buy a car from me. And my brand is going to be about easy going. My brand is going to be about nice guy. My brand is going to be about family guy, trustworthy, member of the community, um, volunteer pastor. Like my brand is going to be about all those things so that people want to buy a car from me. And how do you think that conversation is going to be go with the dealership that employs me? Do you think I am going to have more or less leverage in that situation? I'm going to have a lot more leverage. And how do you think that's going to play out for me when other dealers want my brand loyalty to now become part of their brand? Is that going to be work out good for me or bad for me? It's going to be really good for me. What's it going to do for my dealership? It puts them at a disadvantage. So if you're watching this and you're a dealer principal or general manager or whatever, it's like now it's the strength of your brand as a dealership versus the strength of your salesperson's brand. And boy, I think I'm opening a can of worms here that I didn't expect to, but it's a brand war. It is a brand war straight up. The internet and social media has taken all the middlemen out. It has taken all the barriers away. And now everybody's in control of their own brand. So if you're a dealer and you haven't built a strong brand, guess what? It's only a matter of time before that rock star brand builder person that everybody loves builds it themselves. So I guess that was a tiny little piece of the article, but I see that and my mind just goes. It's already happening. And I'm going to try to get some examples for you. It's already happening. And this is just going to, this is just going to make it go forward. This is just going to accelerate the pace. So all of that saying like, are we having fun yet? Are we embracing the change yet? Because we don't have a choice. Change will find us. So that's what we got for episode 33. A lot of change, a lot of embracing the path. We're doing a lot of stuff. Episode 33 is 33 steps of pursuing this goal of bringing a community together to be better. And when we started, we didn't know it was going to turn into a podcast that people liked listening to and tuned in, you know, and wanted to be a part of. We just wanted to start creating content and engaging the process of making meaningful things for an industry, right? So that we would be seen as people who understand the problems, people that can be seen as um, creatively talented to produce them and et cetera, et cetera. And here we are, right? And one step led to another, led to another open door, led to another opportunity. And now we've gone from nobody knowing anything about us or what Dealers Compressed podcast was because it didn't exist. And that was in February. We started this journey. February of 2017, we began filming the very first of the compressed videos that we released. And here we are in September. And now we have listeners and contributors and an audience and we're making meaningful progress in an industry when we talk about branding and margin compression and personal development and motivation and we're like hitting the road in October and we've been talking about this like we're going to a lot of places to promote this message that we've been engaging right so next week uh, actually by the day this podcast launches I'll be sitting in a room in Chicago at the Hierology Elevate convention, and there are going to be a few hundred other people that have engaged the process of making human resources better, hiring better, company culture better. And I'm maybe right now I'll be listening to Billy Bean, um, the mastermind between behind like data, using data to get a better baseball team together for the Oakland A's. But all that, more people pursuing a process which is constantly changing and developing. Doing that, uh, heading to New York City on the 12th, uh, I think the 12th of October, gonna spend some time at VaynerMedia with some of our mentors, uh, most progressive digital marketing agency in the world. We're gonna have some great time there uh, moving the ball. Again, engaging the process. On uh, Las Vegas later in the month at the Driving Sales Executive Summit, have the opportunity to share and to teach about branding and why it matters and why being brand first is the only rational way to be long-term minded with your business build that long-term equity. 
AdWords, you know, I'll get into that later. I probably got into it last week a little bit. A lot of you better really know who you are, what you believe in, the path you're walking, so that you can then engage the process, engage the path, because that's how you get better. That's how you grow. So a lot of awesome things happening. Um, we're going to link up everything we talked about today. We're going to link up all the places we're going to be and what we're going to be speaking about. Um, I really, I've said it before, I'll say it again, please, if we're at one of these events, please come say hi. I look the same all the time. I have a hat. I have a beard. I have a hat because I don't have any hair. I don't know how many people know that. I don't, I don't really. I used to have awesome hair. I was showing some people pictures earlier, but now I have a beard. Please come say hi. Hat, beard, t-shirt, hoodie, Nikes, whatever. Come say hi. I would love to meet you. I would love to, to kind of be part of the path moving forward as we work through things together. Engage the path this week, whether it's just you or it's your organization, right? You have a lot of control over the path that you walk. Don't feel like you don't or don't accept that you don't because the truth is that you do and you always control what's in here. So that's episode 33. That's a lot of stuff going on. That's a lot of stuff we talked about. We're doing a lot of stuff, but I'm optimistic on all of it because one thing is for sure, there will always be something to do. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for being part of the community. Um, thanks for listening. And I really hope to see you soon. And I certainly hope to hear from you soon. So reach out on social. Episode 33, out. I missed. <laughs>